I brought more soldiers than you did. Okay, y'all, back with another paid review. We'll be reviewing a one shot called Mortal Angels. Now, <clears throat> as you know, in Coffee Comics, we review using these two methods here using the passable technique or the mana ingredients, or I should say, and the mana ingredients, right? So if you have four out of four, you have a great product. Three out of four, it's good. Two out of four, good enough. One out of four, it has potential. Um, right off the bat, this story doesn't seem to have neither one, right? And we're gonna go into reasons why. Now, just like the last story I reviewed, if I did not read the synopsis, I wouldn't know what it's about. I'm seeing that this might be a common thing these days. I don't know what it is about young creators, but y'all really need to be able to tell us what the story is about in your first chapter. In fact, in page one, you need to be able to tell us what you're talking about. I shouldn't have to read the synopsis what to know what the story is about here's an example that i did with the old with the last uh review i did using this new manga by the creator of um of levius page one lets us know what the story is about just page one when i was just a kid life was unpredictable humans and humans alike were all desperate to find a way to survive that alone tells me what the story is about. Page two, right? And she was a victim of the times. Just that, I know what the story is about. I didn't have to read the synopsis to know what this story is about. But unfortunately, a lot of indie creators, we always have to read the synopsis to know what the story is about. You're making it too hard for us to want to read your story. You're making it too hard for us to care about your story. You shouldn't make it difficult for people to care. So the synopsis goes as, God himself has come down from the heavens to the city and granted direct descendants of Adam and Eve the ability to fight demons and humans that are working with them. A descendant is on his first pil pilgrimage on his own to stop a demon from entering the mortal plane in a small town that is rebuilding on the outskirts of an ever expanding city. Okay, uh, the last part here is the key, right? They want to stop a demon from entering the mortal plane in a small town that is rebuilding um, on the outskirts of an ever expanding city. Okay, I was expecting that part in chapter one, but that's not what I got. So here's chapter one. Here's the cover. Um, I can tell that this is a humanoid thing. It looks like a machine, but I still have to somewhat decipher it. And this is a similar problem. Like the last story I reviewed, if the reader must decipher what you're showing them, you've already lost them. You've already lost them. Things cannot resemble an idea of what it's supposed to be. It just has to be what it's supposed to be. This page here, you can say, but bro, this is a professional page. No, it doesn't matter. This page has no resemblance or give off the idea of a girl sitting behind jail. It is a girl sitting behind jail. If I use my own, this doesn't resemble an idea of a young boy crying. It is a young boy crying. This doesn't resemble a skull um, opening its mouth. It is a skull opening its mouth. There really needs to be more clarity in the visuals in the indie space. Okay. Um, oh, don't do this again, Global Comics. So we get this opening here, Faith. The unquestioning belief that a being of immense occult power will follow through on its promises at the end of one's accord. 
Now, if I did not read the synopsis, I'd be like, oh, okay. But because I did, and we hear that God himself has come down, right, to give direct descendants of Adam and Eve powers and so on, uh, I'm like, okay, which, which supreme being are you talking about now? Um, I'm, I'm already kind of confused, you know. Maybe it's the demons that people have faith in the wrong uh, supernatural being, perhaps. Then we are thrown here, the year 4777, and we're introduced to these two characters. And right off the bat, I am, um, I am unpleased with what I see. Just using passable alone. Can I make this smaller? Whoops. Um, nah, I can't make it smaller. This manga suffers from a lack of contrast, really. There's too much grayscale action, right? There's too much grayscale action. And um, you're going to see in the next couple of pages why I say that. And there's a severe problem with the facial expressions. Some facial expressions are copy paste of the last panel. It's too obvious and that destroys the immersion and everything. So that's another problem. But anyway, this woman here says, damn it, why does this crap always happen on my shift? I'm still on duty. Get that cancer stick out of your mouth. Then we're introduced to this guy. He starts counting one, two, three, and then he throws the cigar down the city. Why does this have to be our thing? What God sends children to die? We tracked him to Old Town. He's in control of the people. So we couldn't get inside. You'll have to find the icon yourself. Now, this is the third time I'm reading this. The first time I read this, I didn't understand what they were talking about. Who's in control? A demon? Is a demon in control? Is the God in control? And another thing, I didn't know who's talking because in terms of like whoever's counting here, I don't actually know who's counting. Is it this guy who's counting? Because see this speech bubble here, there's actually a tail pointing to the fact that it's her talking. But I don't know who was counting here, whether it was her or him, I don't know. I don't know who it is that's talking over here. If we go back, we can tell at least, yeah, she was talking. But there's an inconsistency of speech uh, bubble tails being attached towards somebody that whom we think is the one talking, but it could be somebody else. Right? Um... She tells him to get the cancer stick out of his mouth, but she still got her cancer stick in her mouth. So I'm like, okay, some can say, bro, you're being rather critical. Nah, I'm not. There has to be, it has to make sense. We can't just put things in there just because it's cool. Maybe she's a superior to him and so on. Maybe. But once again, I'm trying to make sense of things. It shouldn't be that way. Why can it not be clear? Why can it not be clear the hierarchy of power, right? That who's more powerful, who has more authority? Again, using this example of this manga, we can tell who has more authority here. We can tell this is the gang leader. We can tell that Jimmy here is the lackey. Right? With the words, with even the posture and so on. And you can say, well, she is giving him an order that um, you have to find the icon yourself. But yeah, it's just not clear enough. It's not clear enough. And so they're rebuilding the town. It looks even better than it did before the meltdown. So this is the town and it's covered with all kinds of gray. Now, if something is covered with all kinds of gray, it destroys the mood and it can destroy, if you're trying to achieve atmospheric perspective using grayscale or just 
adding more depth to the overall page using grayscale. Well, it becomes flat when everything is grayed out like this. It becomes totally flat. And so, judging by the passable standard, um, there is no contrast here because it's totally grayed out. The facial expressions in this first uh, page introduced to the characters, they are not vivid enough. They are not expressive enough, which makes it feel makes it feel forgettable. Like they don't feel alive because the character expressions they are just so they are just so I don't know forgettable. That's all I can say. They are honestly just forgettable. They are not expressive. They don't seem alive. And then we are introduced to what seems to be somebody sleeping in a uh, warehouse. I will say I like how the artist draws his uh, mechanical devices. It's pretty cool. So the camera picks up that somebody's walking towards the city and the alarm goes off and a guy on a robot spots him. And then we're introduced to this guy with the big belly and bionic arms. And he says, I thought would have more time, but it's all right. We're ready for you. Everybody, it's time. Get home. So it looks like the inhabitants of this city are building this city for, I'm not sure what reason, right? Outside the synopsis, I'm not sure for what reason. Um, and this guy seems to be their leader. And he tells everybody to go home. And some of the workers say they want to stay with him. And he says, no, go home. And so they do. Then the big guy, his name is Rory, encounters the agent, I suppose, by the gate. He's on the outside, he's on the inside. And he says, Mirianne, what are you doing? I don't know who's talking right here. Um, if I just kill him, this last one, we don't have to worry about the church anymore we would be able to finish rebuilding Old Town. So is the agent a member of the church? Is the church oppressing the people of this town? It, that's what it looks like. But again, I'm deciphering things for myself. I'm making sense of things for myself, which should not be the case. And some might argue and be like, well, you're telling us you want to be spoon fed. No, you don't have to spoon feed me, but it just has to make sense. I shouldn't have to decipher things. Again, same thing here. Everything that happens in this story is given to us properly, right? We don't feel spoon fed. We just walked along as to like how things actually work. But here, there's an element of deciphering what's going on. So the big guy, Rory, uh, says, you said you'd stop after the last one. It's already been three. See, technically, I'm not sure who's talking because there's no tail attached to this speech bubble. Maybe it's the agent talking. I don't know. Now, if you're a man of your word and you still want to sleep at night, then you'll stop now. I suppose it is the agent making a threat that, hey, you all need to stop building. So the door, the gate is open and they meet and they stare each other down. Uh, Rory, with his giant belly, says, we both can. I don't know what that means. We both can. I, I don't know what that means. What has to happen? I suppose he means we both know what has to happen. But it doesn't have to happen here. It doesn't have to happen now. But that offer ends if you don't get that cancer stick out your mouth. So is it the agent that's speaking, saying these things? Or is it Rory speaking and saying these things? Because both of them got cancer sticks in their mouth. But Rory doesn't seem to have his in this panel. So what's going on? Again, way too much uh, grayscale, way too much, right? The facial expression, 
At least here he looks a bit more serious, but it's still not expressive enough. Who is talking here? If I have to figure out who's talking, you're making me do a lot of hard work. You're making me lazy to keep reading. You're making me angry that I'm still reading. You're making me frustrated that I have to figure out what you are trying to say with your story. Honestly, no, we, we should not. We should not make our readers like work so hard in order to understand. Imagine if McDonald's packaged their burgers in a concrete box and you need a hammer to smash that thing open to get your burger. Are people going to order McDonald's again? They pay for it, but now it's in a concrete box. I need to grab a jackhammer to open it. No, absolutely not. Don't make it too hard for us. So that was chapter one. We go to chapter two, because chapter one was pretty much like 15 pages. Um, chapter two, strange fruit. So they stay each other down and the agent whips out a knife. And I'm wondering to myself like, okay, here, right here, right? Who has the superpowers? Who has the special abilities that God gave? Who here is actually a direct descendant of Adam and Eve? Because the agent whipping out a tiny knife against Rory, who has an enormous hammer and bionic arms. How on earth can I take the little agent seriously? He's got a tiny knife. I don't know if he has powers. I don't know what he stands for, what organization he's working for, working with. I have no idea who he is, what he wants, why he's doing all of this. I have no idea. And so I don't care about him. But somehow he's a threat. It's just not believable. You know, it's not believable. It's hard to take serious. It's hard to believe this moment as something serious, like as some a, a serious moment. It's hard to believe that it is a serious moment. Honestly, really? And so somebody drops their cigar, um, which is the agents, I suppose. Um, and Rory says, good man, let's go for a walk. So Rory having his own cancer stick in his mouth is giving orders to the agent who was also given an order by the other agent to drop the cancer stick, but he has his cancer stick. So who actually has more authority here? Again, the agent with the dreadlocks. If the female had more authority than him, we can decipher and say, okay, she definitely did because she told him what to do. Go to the city, go retrieve the icon. Fine, he did so, meaning she has more authority. But now the agent, whom we think is a subordinate or working for the church that has a rule or whatever over these people in the city, you would think that he would be able to defy anything that Rory is saying because he has more authority. But Rory still with his cancer stick gives him a direct order and says, drop it. And then he says, good man, let's go for a walk. Now, again, I'm not sure if it's Rory talking. I'm deciphering if it's actually him. Where's this? speech bubble, uh, where's the, the tail for this speech bubble? Where is it? We know it's the agent who dropped the cigar because um, Rory still has his. Where's the tail? You need to attach a tail to show us who's talking. This only ends one way. This time there's a tail attached to the agent concealing his knife. Then Rory says, I'm prepared for it, but the others, they'll need more time. Prepared for what? Then suddenly Rory's angry and says, what are you doing? I told you all to get home. This is the last time I'll say it. Then the people, they say, we can't do that, Rory. That bastard will destroy everything we built. We won't have anything if he stays alive. So now I am again deciphering 
as to like perhaps there's a demon controlling because according to page according to chapter one the female agent says said he is controlling them i suppose that he must be a demon the demon trying to infiltrate the uh, mortal realm you see if i didn't read the synopsis I wouldn't know that. I wouldn't know that. And then I would have dropped the whole story just like that because I'd be confused. You must be able to tell people what the story is about page one. It should not be multiple chapters later than we finally get what's going on or we finally care about the main character. Even right now, I don't know who the main character is. I don't know. I don't know who to support. I don't know who to back. I, I don't relate to any one of them. Rory is a giant dude with an enormous gut, taxi driver level, a uh, big belly, bald as hell, Rick Ross looking nigga, right? And then we have the agent with the dreadlocks who's like totally quiet, but he's supposed to be a tough guy, but he takes orders from Rory, who's underneath him. You, you know, there's nobody I like thus far. And I can only understand what's going on because I read the synopsis. When I first read it, I did not read the synopsis and I didn't understand what's going on. But anyway, the people say he'll destroy everything if um, we let him stay alive and they open fire and the agent gets shot and this guy says stay down zealot for years we had nothing we even asked you for help and you all rejected us but when we finally get on our feet now you want to show up and take everything so indeed deciphering some more it does look like this agent is a representative of the church right Okay, because he calls him a zealot. Then suddenly Rory, the protector of the city, cuts the head or smashes the head of one of his people clean off. And he just drops like that. And then everybody else in the crowd suddenly is quiet and afraid. And then Rory says, anyone else want to try my patience? Now, when I said earlier that there's cut and paste use who uses here of um panels especially the character expressions i meant this one look at rory's face here and look at his face here it's like the exact same expression exact same thing cut and paste now i want to say that's fine but you can't make it obvious you can't make it obvious there has to be something you do with it right like redrawing things a thousand times does suck, but you can't make it obvious. You can't make it cut or cut and paste. You're just going to destroy the overall flow, immersion, and reading experience of the reader. Trying to take corners like this. People will just say, no, nah, this is lazy work. I, I'm not going to make a purchase. So Rory killing one of his own people out of nowhere, right? Instead of just pushing him to the ground, at least saying, hey, stop it. Why does he have to kill him? And so violently, why? And what is Rory? The protector? Either way, I don't I kind of don't care. Um, and it's a problem that I don't care. Now, I really don't care times 10. Because Rory is here saying, I protect my people, my people of my city. But he just killed one of his own people like he was swatting a fly. So he goes back to the agent and says, are you still alive? Let's keep going. And then they arrive at um, whatever this is. There's our dream. If you showed up a year or two later, then this would be an amazing view. Where's the icon? Bottom of the complex. So they start walking all the way down. And honestly, I, I don't, I suppose it's a complex, but what exactly is it? Let's go back to the synopsis, right? 
to stop a demon from entering the mortal realm in a small town that is rebuilding on the outskirts. So we saw the giant gates in chapter one being opened. So what this thing is, is a complex. It's a, it's a machine. It's a, it's a dome. What's it for? Is it a portal? Because he says this, that's our dream. Are they trying to build a portal for the demon? It looks like they have no awareness that they're building something for a demon. But anyway, where is the icon at the bottom? They begin walking and walking all the way down, um, 60 feet down. And we see all these structures. They're pretty cool. And the panel flow is pretty, pretty good, actually. Um, so I'm being led along very nicely and smoothly um, out of the passable method. Uh, things seem to be operating just fine for panel flow. Composition is a hit or miss here and there. Facial expression definitely missing. Contrast majority of the time missing. So I would say when it comes to the passable method, it's a one out of the four. So they go down the stairs and then the agent, I think it's the agent because there is no tail attached to the speech bubble. What is it about flesh that makes gods want to mutilate so vividly? Now, this is a question presented by what seems to be the agent because the answer is given by Rory. Suddenly his eyes look weird here. And this time there is a tail attached to the speech bubble. He says they want us to be perfect in their eyes, or maybe they just think we're so ugly. They change us just to stand looking at us. Then suddenly the agent begins to laugh like the Joker. And then we see a giant machine of flesh. And that's the end of chapter two, while the agent is laughing, ha, ha, ha. I don't know what's funny. I don't know what's funny. I don't understand what's funny. Um, I don't understand this part of what makes gods want to mutilate so vividly. If he represents the church, I would think there would be a battle of angels and demons because that's what the synopsis kind of implies. That if God himself, clearly we're talking about the Christian God here because of the whole Adam and Eve thing. Now, if the Christian God is good and he gives descendants of Adam and Eve powers to fight demons and evil people who work with demons and the agent is a representative of the church why is he laughing and why is he using the word why what is it about that makes gods wouldn't he say because he represents the church wouldn't he say what what about demons wants them to mutilate flesh so vividly that's what i would assume a church agent would say but that's not the case he's saying other gods well, using the Christian theology, there are no other gods. They only are demons in disguise. So why doesn't he use the correct Christian language? It's confusing, right? In fact, the agent himself seems rather evil. There's nothing funny. If you represent the church, even the Catholic church as jacked as it, it is, you would at least pretend that you care about people's flesh being disemboweled, but instead the agent is laughing about it. We don't actually know who is in service of who. Who's being actually controlled by demons here? Is it the people of the city? That's what the agent in chapter one said, or is it the church agents themselves? We don't know. We have no idea, and so the story is confusing. If you read the synopsis and read these two chapters, you're confused. If you read the story without the synopsis, you're even more confused. Uh, 
I uh, recommend that the author starts all over again. I'm sorry, bro, but you're going to have to start all over again. Um, with the passable method, you have one out of the four. Your panel flow is pretty cool. It's pretty all right. But when it comes to the mana ingredients, there is nothing familiar about it. There is nothing relatable about it. There is nothing hopeful about it. And there's absolutely nothing inspiring about it. If you get a zero out of four, right, it means you have to rework your whole thing. You have to rework your whole thing. I'm sorry, man, but you're going to have to rework it. You got to have to rework it. I, I recommend also that people go study chapter ones of their favorite series. In fact, no, I recommend go study chapter ones of somewhat recent manga that's that's uh, that's came out such as this one this one came out yesterday and this is chapter one study this chapter one and how it tells us and guides us through um what it's trying to say what the story is about now 90 chapters is, i mean 90 pages is too long it's actually way too long um i don't recommend making your chapter one this long respect the audience's time okay if we try to find something else find whatever appeals to you and study its chapter one and how soon they got to the point because we still haven't really gotten to the point in this story still don't really know what the story is about if i don't read the synopsis i don't know what the story is about I have no idea what it's about i read the synopsis i know what it's about but then the characters contradict what it's about. And so it's a problem. It ain't, it's not easy peasy creating a story, right? It's not. It takes study, it takes sacrifice, it takes comparison. People who just wanna write stories because it's cool they they want to get a fan base they want to get compliments they want to get teletubbies milk and cookies and presents because wow they met they managed to create a story um that cannot have a positive impact in people's lives they just can't because you did this thing just because I don't know what the story is trying to say. I have no idea. It has to have something to say. That is the standard of coffee comics. You must have something to say with your story. If you don't, you're wasting people's time. But you see, like the story I reviewed a while ago, um, I think it was Chop Suey's story. See, that manga knows what type of story it is. It understands the audience that it's trying to sell to. It's not even taking itself seriously. But this story is taking itself seriously. The last um, manga I reviewed was taking itself seriously. But it cannot be taken seriously because of the confusion and the lack of clarity either in visuals or narrative. Please go study some chapter ones. Study some chapter ones, please. Okay. Um, if you want a review, I suppose this is more than just a review at this point. This is straight up a critique. This is some, I'm doing an editor's job. The Japanese can't do it anymore. They want to let trash be published because they desperate. Viz Media ain't doing nothing. Hisashi just letting everything get plastered all over the wall. Absolutely not. So if you want a review slash critique, it's $40 per chapter. Okay, $40 per chapter. A single chapter is from 15 pages to 25 pages, right? $40 per chapter. Um, but I'm sorry, bro. Rework this, please. Rework it and ask yourself, who exactly are you trying to sell to? Um, who's your target market? Because I, I read this, I don't know who your target market is. I, I really don't. The last one I read, I don't know who the target market was. Is this shonen? Is this seinen? What is this? 
Is this sci-fi? Is this a thriller? Is this a mystery? What is this? Is it fantasy? I'm not quite sure. Until next time.